Look at this picture. 10 minutes before it was taken, someone in this photo had stolen all the money from the cafe on the beach. However, all these people claim that none of them visited the cafe in the last 10 Ooh. minutes. Who is the thief? The thief is the man with ice cream. Ooh. If he had bought it more than 10 minutes ago, it would have already melted or the man would have already eaten it. Mark and James played in the attic where it was dark <laughs> and dirty. But when they came down, only Mark's face was covered with dust. James's face was miraculously clean. However, it was James who went and washed his face. Why? James looked at Mark's face and thought that he was dirty too. At the same time, when Mark looked at James, whose face was spotless, he decided he was just as clean. To crack this riddle, you need to be very attentive. Okay, consider yourself warned. Hmm. An elderly lady called the police. A detective picked up the call. The woman reported that her neighbor, a young woman called Gina, seemed to have disappeared. The woman hadn't seen her for a few days and got worried. When the police arrived at Gina's house, they managed to unlock the door and found Gina inside, tied to a chair with her mouth covered with a scarf. When she could talk again, she told the police that three days ago, a robber had broken into her house, tied her, and taken all her money and gadgets. The police officers didn't believe Gina. Why? Look at the date on the calendar. Over there on the wall, see? It's the same date as the one on the calendar at the police station. But if Gina was tied all this time, who was changing the dates on her calendar? <laughs> you got lost in a forest. It's getting dark, and very soon, wild animals will start their hunt. There are four roads you can choose from, the north, south, west, and east but the north path will take you to a supermassive black hole that will swallow you up. The south road goes through a lake full of huge whale sharks. If you take the west road, you'll end up at the edge of a ginormous hole in the ground that can't be crossed. And the east path will bring you to a sky-high mountain that is impossible to climb over. Which road should you take? You need to follow the south road. Whale sharks present no threat to people. They will let you swim across the lake without any problems. Lauren cooked 10 buckets of chicken wings for a family gathering, one for each guest. But later, it turned out a little Jimmy was left without his portion. Someone took two buckets. Was it Uncle Patrick? He seems suspicious. Or maybe Lauren's son, Justin. He's wearing this creepy know-it-all smile. Or could little Jimmy himself hide his chicken wings in his bag with toys to get another portion? Look at the dog. It wouldn't leave Uncle Patrick's side. It can smell the meat the man has hidden. One night, you find yourself stuck in an old spooky castle. You hear someone chasing after you, and you run faster and faster. But suddenly, a dead end. Oh, no. However, a bit later, you notice three doors on the wall. But behind each door, there are some horrifying creatures. The first door hides zombies. Werewolves are behind the second door. And if you open the third door, you'll come face to face with bloodthirsty vampires. Which door should you open to have a chance to survive? Escape through the second door. The moon is waxing at the moment and werewolves transform only on a full moon. Look at these students. Who's cheating? It's the guy in the front row. He's balancing an open book on his foot. 
It's the year 2158. Jim is repairing the roof of his garage. At one point, he slips, falls to the ground, and breaks his leg. But the next day, Jim is already walking in the park, looking perfectly yeah. fine. How is it possible? Jim is a robot. See that red light blinking over his left ear? They must have repaired him really fast. Another robot committed a crime. Unfortunately, the police were unable to catch the culprit immediately. But they suspended three people, and each of them could be the criminal. Mm. A police officer had to figure out the true identities of these people. He had a knife, a screwdriver, a bottle of water, and a pen. Which object should he use to reach his goal? He can make the suspects drink from the bottle. The robot will either refuse or short circuit. Now look at these guys. Who do you think is a real superhero? It's not Joker, his hands aren't as white as the rest of his body. And it's not Batman, his mask has no ears, but Superman is real. Mrs. Lawrence went missing on Friday. Her husband informed the police and they started an investigation. The last person to see the woman was a shop assistant in a jewelry store. She confirmed that the woman who had been wearing a red dress and red shoes had bought a necklace that day. On Saturday, Mrs. Lawrence called the police herself. She whispered, I'm locked in some house. I managed to find a cell phone, but I may be discovered at any... Ah! The police officer managed to track the call, but he could only figure out the street. Mm. Look at the houses on this street and try to understand where Mrs. Lawrence is kept. She must be kept in this house. Look, there's a tiny piece of red fabric on the fence over there. And we know that Mrs. Lawrence was wearing a red dress. You see a boat filled with people, but at the same time, there isn't a single person on board. How is it possible? All the people on the boat are married. Four witches met up for their annual coven. The head witch looked at the rest of the group and exclaimed, According to the laws of our community, we can't live among people or communicate with them. And still, one of you has broken this rule. Look at the witches and find out who it is. It's the witch in a purple hat. There's a smartphone in her pocket. Three friends, Kathy, Mark, and Lauren, gathered together to catch up on their latest news at Lauren's place. At one point, they decided to play hide and seek. Oh, yeah. When it was Lauren's turn to look for her friends, she easily found oh, Mark. Yes. But even with his help, she couldn't spot Kathy. Ah. Can you help Lauren find her friend? She's hiding in a trash can. Ew! Huh. To crack this one, you might need to think outside the box again. A man is pushing a car along the road. Then he arrives at a hotel. He shouts, I'm bankrupt! Why? The man is playing Monopoly. And now, let's have some fun. I've got very unusual riddles for you with non-standard answers. An electric train is moving at a speed of 100 miles per hour in the northern direction, and the wind is blowing at a speed of 8 miles per hour in the western direction. Which way will the smoke go? Oh, come on. Electric trains don't produce smoke. 
Great, the next one for you. How many times can you subtract 10 from 50? Just once. After that, you'll be subtracting 10 from 40. How can you make number 1 disappear? You just add the letter G at the beginning, and it's gone. What can you easily hold without touching it? A conversation. If you're sociable enough, that is. My life is hard. Every night, I'm told what to do. And every morning, I do exactly what I was told to do. And still, I get scolded every time. What am I? I'm an alarm clock. Stuart works as a teacher in an old British magic school, which is located in a beautiful castle. Early in the morning, he's walking down the corridor. Suddenly, Stuart hears a loud noise from the class and goes there to check. He sees three students raising their wands. One of them is a fake wizard. Can you guess who? This guy, he has an ordinary twig instead of a magic wand. Stuart settles down the quarrel and goes to the dining hall. He chooses one of these four breakfast sets. But Stuart doesn't eat any meat or fish. Also, he's allergic to all the purple fruits and berries. Can you help him choose the safest option? First of all, let's exclude the first breakfast. This cotton cheese bagel looks good, but it contains salmon. The second set has toast with blueberry jam, which may cause an allergic reaction. As for the fourth option, fried bacon is hiding under this cute waffle. So, Stuart should choose the third option. Although it contains some purple cabbage, nobody said that he's allergic to purple vegetables too. The cook offers Stuart a deal. If you guess my riddle, you'll get a double dessert. Stuart agrees. Here's the riddle. What melts in a freezer? The frost when the freezer is switched off. After breakfast, Stuart goes to the school greenhouse to say hi to Miss Palmer. She looks very confused. In the morning, three evil wizards opened a magical portal and snuck into the greenhouse. They took the shape of my plants, and now I don't know where they are. Can you help Stuart find them? Take a look at this cactus. It has no root. It just floats in the air without a pot. All the lilies have six petals, but this one only has five. And this pumpkin has a watermelon pattern and color. Therefore, these three odd plants should be the wizards. Stuart walks down the great hall. Suddenly, an owl lands on his head and ruins his hairstyling. Stuart gets furious and asks three students standing nearby, Whose owl is this? Can you spot the owner of this bird? It's this guy. He has the same colored accessory as his owl. It's time for the flying lesson. Three students, Wendy, Drake, and Blair, are about to have a race on their broomsticks. Can you spot who's cheating? Blair is casting a spell on her broomstick to make it go faster. Blair gets disqualified. Meanwhile, Drake and Wendy and Rob get ready to start the race. Can you guess who's going to win?
Drake has a broken broom, and Rob's position is wrong. It will take him more time to catch the broom and hit the road, so Wendy has the best chance of winning. Stuart begins transfiguration lesson. He gives each of his students an apple and asks them to turn the fruits into stones. And then Stuart goes to the toilet. After a while, he returns and finds a huge toad sitting on his desk. Stuart questions three suspects. Among the students, Drake says, I didn't do it. I was too busy with your task. Luckily, I made it. Bella says, It was Magnus. I saw him catching a toad in the pond last night. And Magnus says, It was Drake. He wanted to distract you because he didn't do his homework. Who's lying? Drake, take a look at his desk. There's an apple in front of him, but he said that he succeeded in turning it into a stone. Stuart is riding a broom in the garden during his lunch break. Suddenly, someone throws a purple paint tube on his head. Stuart loses balance and falls. He finds three suspects and interrogates them. Billy says, I was just sitting under this ancient oak and doing my own work. Bella says, I was painting Billy's portrait. At some point, I noticed that my purple paint was missing. We both were here all the time. And Lily says, I was just flying on my broom. I didn't even see any paint, sir. Who pranked Stuart? There's purple paint on Bella's hands, but it's okay because she was painting. Billy's outfit looks fine, but Lily has these odd smudges of purple paint on her hair. That's because she hid the tube under her witchy hat after the prank. Stuart is visiting the human world once a week because he loves one local bakery. But today, he finds out that he's not the only magical guy here. Can you guess why? Take a look at this pretty lady. She looks young, but her reflection in the mirror shows she's an old witchy lady. Every winter, a fancy ball takes place at the magic school. Several students perform a traditional dance as part of the opening ceremony. Suddenly, one of the dancers, Lily, loses her balance and falls in front of everyone. Stuart decides to investigate this case and finds out that someone had spilled mm -hmm. olive oil on the dance floor on purpose. He interrogates three suspects. Harry says, Sir, I didn't do it. Lily is my girlfriend. Why would I prank her so meanly? Richard says, Lily totally deserved that. She refused to go to the ball with me. I don't know who did it, but I'm grateful to this person. And Bella says, Before the performance, I was taking selfies with my boyfriend. Look at the pictures, if you don't believe me. Now Stuart knows exactly who's guilty. What about you? It was Bella. Take a look at her selfies. She's wearing a witch bottle necklace and it's filled with greenish oil. But now it's empty. The magic school hired a photographer to take fancy pictures at the ball. This photo was taken at midnight and this one half an hour later. Can you guess what happened here? This wizard didn't push her. He was actually trying to save her by raising his hands and casting a spell. And he succeeded, as we can see from the second picture. The winter ball is over. Stuart throws an after party for teachers at his apartment. Everything goes well, but the next day, Stuart finds out that someone had stolen the rarest and most expensive spell book from his secret library. Stuart has never told anyone about this room, but the lock isn't broken, which means that the thief knew a special spell to open the door. Only four guests possess this level of magic, Ambrose, Morgana, Rosamond, and Richard. Stuart rushes to the teacher's room. He questions all the suspects. 
Each teacher claims to have nothing to do with the robbery. Can you guess who's the thief? Ambrose, his coat is missing one gold button because he dropped it at the crime scene. Meanwhile, Ambrose looks through the spell book and finds a potion recipe that allows teleporting anywhere. But unfortunately, the last three ingredients are encoded. Here's a hint to crack the first one. It's a flower that can be found between the nose and the chin. Any idea what it might be? Tulips. Here's the next hint. What kind of vegetable do people look forward to getting every month? Celery. And this clue will lead you to the final ingredient. What kind of room can you eat? Mushroom. Ambrose finishes the potion and teleports to an unknown place. In the evening, Stuart arranges an urgent Zoom call with his fellow wizards. They're all currently in the same city, but they don't have time to meet offline. Unfortunately, their video call gets interrupted by a stranger. Can you spot the imposter? All the wizards live in the same city, which means they're in the same time zone. The call takes place in the evening. It should be dark outside, but this guy is in the middle of a sunny day. Therefore, he's the imposter. Stuart goes to the magic market to buy special ingredients for a potion that will help him find the stolen book. One violet costs 10 bronze coins, and the price for one lily is 15 coins. Can you calculate the price of this one star flower? One star flower will cost 20 bronze coins. Each flower costs 2.5 coins per petal. And this particular star flower has eight petals. Harry uploads a dating app, hoping to find a girlfriend. He likes these three ladies, but two of them are not single. Can you guess who? The second lady has two shampoos on a bathroom shelf, one for her curly hair and one shampoo for male hair and beards. So she's probably living with her husband, and the third lady is wearing a necklace in the shape of half a heart. The second half probably belongs to her boyfriend. So only the first lady is single. Early in the morning, Harry goes to the local park for a workout. He sees these three runners on the way. Can you decide who's faster? The second one. What about these cyclists? Who's the fastest? The third one. After the workout, Harry enters his favorite cafe and sees a lot of people. All the tables are occupied, but one person already finished eating. Can you guess who? This guy, there's money on his table. Harry looks around the cafe and sees a crying woman. Can you guess why she's so upset? She's crying because her friend is pulling her hair. Harry is flying business class to another city. There are four women in the cabin. One of them is smuggling gold. Can you guess who?
The fourth one, her belly is unnaturally square. So he goes to the park and gets attacked by a crowd of zombies. Harry is terrified. He begins to run away. There are three possible routes in front of him, but only one of these routes will actually take him to a shelter. Can you help Harry find the correct way? Route A doesn't look simple, but it's the only way out. Harry is visiting an engagement party. His brother Kevin proposes to his girlfriend Bella with a fancy diamond ring. And she says yes. The party goes well, but suddenly, the lights turn off for 20 seconds. When the power is back again, Bella sees that someone has sneaked an engagement ring from her finger. Harry questions three suspects. Peter says, I was cutting a cake in the kitchen when the lights turned off. Ali says, I was playing the piano in the living room when suddenly it became super dark. But I'm a pro, so I continue to play blindly. And Kitty says, Sorry, I've been arguing on the phone with my ex-boyfriend, so I didn't look around. Who's lying? Allie. She said she was playing the piano, but there are no musical instruments in the living room. At the party, Harry meets a pretty lady named Monica. He falls in love with her at first sight, but unfortunately, she's already married. Can you guess which one of these guys is her spouse? It's the first guy. He's the only one who doesn't hold any drink, and Monica is holding two glasses, one for herself and one for her husband. The party goes on and Harry meets Vlad. He's a real vampire. One of these ladies is his wife. Can you guess who? The first lady's not a vampire. She bit this cookie and smeared her red lipstick. And the second one is wearing a garlic necklace probably to chase away evil powers. Meanwhile, the third lady has sharp ears and red eyes, so she's probably a vampire just like Vlad. But the task was to spot Vlad's wife. Nobody said that she's necessarily a vampire. Take a look at the first lady's ring finger. She has a ruby ring that's similar to Vlad's. Therefore, she's his spouse. Harry runs a hardware store chain. He arrives at one of the shops to investigate a theft. The manager says, this morning I found out that some Xboxes are missing. They could be stolen yesterday. Only two guys worked last night. One of them must be the thief. Personally, I think it was Bob. Harry asks, why do you think so? I talked to both of them. Bob said that he saw nothing suspicious, and Zach said that he'd seen Bob put some boxes in the back seat of his car. Harry asks the manager to take him to Bob. They approach Bob at the parking lot. Harry says, now I'm pretty sure that Zack is guilty. Why did Harry think so? Zack said Bob put some boxes in the back seat of his car. However, Bob has a two-seat car. Harry calls the police and they arrest Zack. The manager decides to change the seven number password on the storage door to avoid further thefts. He leaves this little clue for all his colleagues. Can you crack this code? The number of fingers implies five. The number of angles in the triangle implies three. The number of petals in the flower is six. The circle implies zero. The rainbow has seven colors. It symbolizes the number seven. And finally, the square has four angles. So the passcode is 536074. Harry figures out the code and changes it again to test Bob's intelligence. Harry gives him the following clue. It's a seven digit code. The first digit is the number of zeros in the code. The second digit is the number of ones in it. The third digit is the number of twos. 
The fourth digit is the number of threes. The fifth digit is the number of fours. The sixth digit reveals the number of fives. And finally, the seventh digit shows the number of sixes. Can you figure out the code? The correct answer is 3211000. Harry goes on a road trip. He stops in the middle of a desert to take pictures. Can you spot three odd things? Harry's shadow falls to the right and the shadows from the cacti fall to the left. He's in the desert, but this cactus is growing in a pot, and this lizard is wearing tiny shoes. Harry rents a room in a motel for a couple of days. Unfortunately, he has a very annoying neighbor, Karen. They're arguing all the time. One day, Karen calls the local security and accuses Harry of stealing her towel. It's been raining all day long, so I didn't go to the beach and stayed in my room. Harry grabbed my beach towel from this rope. I could see from my window. He folded it and put it into his backpack. The guard immediately realizes that Karen is lying. How? The rope is outdoors. It doesn't make any sense to dry towels in the rain. Harry purchases a tour to see the local waterfalls. He takes a nap on the bus. Then he wakes up and sees that his favorite baseball cap is missing. Harry interrogates three tourists nearby. Sally says, Sorry, I was sleeping too. I don't know who did it. Oliver says, Look at me, I don't wear baseball caps, man. I prefer classy hats. And Molly says, I think it was Sally. She's very suspicious. I'm almost sure that she tried to steal my chocolates when I fell asleep. Can you spot the thief? It was Oliver. He hit Harry's cap under his classy hat. Harry enters the local bakery. Rosie, the barista, is very upset. I have so many coffee orders, but someone stole all the beans from the storage room. Harry interrogates three suspects. Louis, the cook, says, I spent the whole day in the kitchen baking croissants, and I'm just working on a new batch. I don't have time to talk to you. Ron, the waiter, says, I forgot to set my alarm, so I overslept and arrived just now. I don't know who sneaked the beans. And finally, Dan, the manager, says, I've been talking to one dissatisfied customer all morning. She was so annoying. I didn't have the chance to look around. Who's lying? The cook. There are no croissants either in the kitchen or in the bakery window. Greetings to the best bright side detectives. Have you prepared your magnifying glasses? Then let's start. Yeah. A man was trapped in a dark room. His only source of light was a candle. There were three doors leading out of the room. Behind one of them, there was a tunnel that could help him escape. Behind the other two doors, there was a concrete wall. The man had a key that could uh -oh. open any of the doors, but he could only use it once. Still, the man managed to get away. How did he do this? He brought the candle to each of the keyholes in turn. Near the door with the tunnel, the flame started to flicker. Imagine that you're stuck on the top floor of a 30-story building and there are no stairs you could take. Your only option is to use an elevator. There are four elevators in front of you, but the first one is swarming with extremely venomous spiders. In the second elevator, ah, look, there's no elevator. You can only see an empty shaft. The third elevator is filled with toxic liquid. As for the fourth elevator, a furious hungry tiger is inside. Uh -oh. It seems like a no-win situation, but you have to find a way out. Which elevator?
you should choose elevator number three. As soon as the doors of this elevator open, all the liquid will pour out. And the only thing you'll need to do is to step far away enough not to have your shoes soaked. Now let's check how attentive you are. Yeah. Try to figure out which rabbit doesn't have a twin. A small hint. Pay attention to the matching patterns on their ears, bellies, and cute little faces. Yep, that's the one we're looking for. Unlike others, it has darker spots around its nose and on its ears. And here's a bunch of kitties with their tails sticking up. A perfect hiding spot for a little bunny. Can you find it? This white rabbit is hiding literally in plain sight. Damien has bought a new keyboard, but apparently the seller fooled the guy and gave him a fake one. Can you find the proof? The keyboard has no fives, but there are two fours. Someone hid a soccer ball in this crowd of happy pandas. Can you spot it? Right, here it is. So easy to miss. A dog has run away from its master. It's now hiding somewhere among all these bulls. Can you help the worried owner find his pooch? Right, here it is. Similar, but not the same. Look at these two ladies. Which one seems suspicious? It's the woman on the right. Her reflection is all wrong. She's probably not human. All these people seem to be taking a shower. But which one is doing something wrong? The guy on the left, he probably just pretends to be taking a shower, but the water isn't running. Look at these people dancing at a costume party attentively. You need to figure out who is a werewolf. It's that guy in the corner. He's wearing a human mask, but his thick hair is peeking from underneath the mask. All of these people look well off, wearing some jewelry and nice outfits, but only one of them is indeed rich. It's that guy in a t-shirt. While he's focusing on his work, his bodyguards are waiting for him. Look at how attentively they're watching him and their surroundings. Which of these girls relaxing near the swimming pool is Mary? This girl doesn't have a ring, but she's wearing it on another finger. The second girl doesn't have a ring whatsoever. It's the third girl that's married. She must have taken her ring off before going for a swim, even though she isn't wearing it. There's a visible tan line on her ring finger. In one magic country, all animals are intelligent and rational. In one clearing, there are 10 lions and a sheep. Your task is to watch them and make sure the lions don't harm the sheep. If you get distracted, a lion can eat a sheep. But what the lions don't know is that if one of them does this, it will turn into a sheep too. In this case, the rest of the lions will probably eat it as well. If you leave this lovely company alone for some time, how many lions and sheep will you find when you come back? When uh -oh. you return, most likely, there will be nine lions and one sheep. 
The main thing here is that all the animals are rational. Once the lion eats the sheep and turns into a sheep itself, the rest of the lions will understand the consequences and prefer to stay in the safety of their natural form. Oliver got a present for his girlfriend Victoria. It was a new smartphone she'd wanted for ages, yes. but Oliver didn't give it to her right away. Instead, he put it into a box. Victoria had uh -oh. to figure out in which of these three boxes the gadget was. Each box had a note. It's in here. Your present isn't here. It's not in the first box. Only one of these notes told the truth. Where is the smartphone? If it's in the first box, it'll mean that claims 1 and 2 are correct, which contradicts the conditions of the riddle. If the phone is in the third box, then both claims 2 and 3 will be true. But if the device is in the second box, note number 3 will be the only truthful statement. Mr. Smart's wife went missing. A detective came to investigate this case. Mr. Smart told her the following. The last time I saw my wife was in the morning. She was having breakfast. When I returned home at 6 p.m., her breakfast was still on the table, but she had disappeared. After hearing the man's story, the detective immediately arrested Mr. Smart. Why did she do so? When the detective arrived at the Smart's house, the breakfast on the table was still steaming. This means that Mr. Smart had set up the scene right before he called the police. Once Mr. Blue, Mr. Red, and Mr. White meet for dinner. When they take off their jackets, Mr. Blue draws their attention to the fact that each of them is wearing a shirt different from their surname. The man in a white shirt looks surprised and says, Yeah, Mr. Blue, you're right. Can you figure out which shirt each man is wearing? So, let's think logically. Mr. Blue can be wearing only a white or red shirt. But we know for sure that another man is dressed in white. This means that Mr. Blue can only be in a red shirt. Mr. White could be dressed in a blue or red shirt, but the red one is already taken by Mr. Blue. So we can logically conclude that Mr. White is wearing blue. And as a result, this leaves us with Mr. Red dressed in a white shirt. Liza was a popular guitar player in a rock band. On Friday, the band was going to have a big gig. Liza's bandmates were waiting for her, but the girl was very late. Eventually, she showed up, but it wasn't Liza. It was her twin sister, Alice. She was envious of Liza, so she locked her sister in the room, took her clothes and the guitar, and pretended to be a band member. But as soon as the musicians saw fake Liza, they immediately knew she wasn't their bandmate. How did they understand? Look how long the girl's nails are. You need to have short nails to play the guitar. A man came to a fruit market to sell watermelons. After he sold half of them and half of a watermelon, he saw he had one watermelon left. How many watermelons did he bring to the market? He came there with three watermelons. A high-speed express train is leaving in 15 minutes. Security guards are scanning everyone's bags and find one of these three bags very suspicious. Can you guess which one? It's the second luggage. This lady has a heavy book among her things, and the title, Dictionary, has the wrong spelling. Maybe it's just a cover to hide something suspicious? The train departs. Unfortunately, this area is full of rocks, so the road is winding a lot. Only one of these routes will lead the train to the final destination. Can you guess which one?
Only the third route is correct. Susan is a first-class passenger. She orders a cup of tea. The waiter brings her what she asked for. Suddenly, Susan sees a fly in her cup and gets terrified. The waiter takes her cup and goes to the kitchen. Then, he returns with a fresh cup of tea. But Susan yells, You brought me the same cup of tea! Gross! How did she know? Susan already had added sugar. The tea was sweet when the waiter brought it back. Susan gets bored and takes a walk around the train. She enters a rail car with three passengers only, Xavier, Gerald, and Peter. One of them can't wait to meet his two daughters when the train arrives at the final destination. He promised to take them to the beach. Can you tell which guy it is? It's Gerald. He has three bucket hats on top of his suitcase. These two cute bucket hats still have price tags, so he probably bought them for his daughters as a gift. The train has arrived. Gerald rents a car to go to the mansion in the forest where his family lives. Unfortunately, the road is surrounded by multiple possessed wild animals. Suddenly, a black cat jumps on the windshield and Gerald crashes into a tree. He has to leave the car and walk to the mansion on his feet. Soon, Gerald finds himself at a crossroad. Can you guess which route is more or less safe? A, B, or C? All three routes have animal footprints. The bushes on the first route are moving even though it's not windy. This means that some animals are hiding behind them. And there's a pair of eyes shining in the dark on the third route. So Gerald will have to move quickly through the second route. It begins to rain heavily. Gerald finds a fancy mansion along the way. The owner invites him inside the house to hide from the rain and grab some snacks. Gerald agrees and finds himself at a glamorous party. There are three models eating in the buffet. One of them is broke. Can you guess who? The second lady. Take a look at her bag. She hides some food for later. Gerald walks around the mansion and sees two roommates. One of them is a thief. Can you guess who? It's not the first maid. There's an open safe with diamonds and cash in front of her, but she doesn't do anything. Meanwhile, the second lady has already hidden a diamond in her bucket, so she's the thief. Gerald eats a snack and falls asleep. He wakes up in an old basement. The mansion owner locked him up. Gerald finds a sheet of paper on the floor. It says, I'll give you a chance to get out of here. The key to the door is inside this closed bag. Try to get it. Gerald tries to rip up the bag, but the fabric is too tough. He tries to tear it using his teeth, but he almost breaks a tooth. How can Gerald get the key? He should break a jar and use a fragment of glass to cut the bag and get the key. Gerald opens the door and enters a storage room. There are three doors leading to freedom. A forest full of hungry predatory animals is hiding behind the first door. The second route is filled with toxic gas that's impossible to stand for even a second. And there's a fire behind the third door. Which way is more or less safe? Gerald should choose the third door. There are bottles of water in the room, and the fire is rather small. Gerald can easily put it out. Finally, Gerald is outdoors. But there are three hidden dangers in this garden. Can you find them?
there's a crocodile in these rose bushes, a laser beam alarm system is on, and a scorpion is hiding in a tree. Gerald runs away through the forest, but something's wrong with this place. Can you spot three odd details? Take a look at this spruce. Lemons don't grow on this type of tree. This beehive is inhabited by butterflies. Also, there are two moons in the sky. Gerald checks into the local motel to get some rest. He leaves his golden watch on the bed and goes to buy some coffee. In an hour, he returns to the room and sees that someone had stolen the watch. Gerald interrogates three suspects. The maid says, I only entered your room once today to clean it before check-in. I have a master key, but it's always with me in my pocket. The woodworker says, I entered your room an hour ago to fix a creaky bed. Everything's fine now. And Gerald's neighbor says, I was feeling sick, that's why I went to bed earlier, so I didn't hear anything weird. Who stole Gerald's watch? No, buddy, the golden watch fell under the bed, see? The next morning, Gerald goes to the motel's lobby to check out. He finds the manager, Lauren, lying unconscious on the floor. Gerald calls the police. They figure out that someone has put Lauren to sleep using an unknown substance and took all the cash. The police officer questioned three people who last saw Lauren conscious and healthy, Rose, Violet and Lily. After checking out the crime scene, the officer arrests one of the witnesses. Can you guess who and why? Lily, take a look at her hair extensions. They're not distributed evenly. That's because Lauren pulled out one strand and squeezed it in her fist. She wanted to leave a clue leading to the criminal. Gerald has just come back from his long trip. He's trying to open a suitcase, but realizes that he has forgotten the four number code. Luckily, Gerald left a note that can help him remember the code. Can you figure out the code? That would be too easy to use the given numbers as they are. To crack this mystery, we should mind the numbers of letters in each given number. So, the correct code is 5364. Finally, Gerald can keep his promise and takes his daughters to the beach. He also takes some food for a picnic. Can you guess the name of this food by emojis? Sandwich. Gerald and his wife Anna have a lot in common. Daughters, careers, and a big house. They do everything together. One day, Anna comes home really late. She's tired, but happy. Gerald gets jealous and yells at her. Anna flames out too. I was working all evening. Gerald says, Sorry, Anna, I don't believe you. It looks like you're dating someone else. Anna refuses to talk and goes to bed alone. Meanwhile, Gerald waits for Anna to fall asleep and checks her purse. He finds nail polish, a wallet, a pack of gum, lipstick, and some keys. Now Gerald is completely sure Anna was seeing someone else. How did he know? The keys are definitely not from their house. The next morning, Gerald receives an email from his boss. Can you guess the meaning of this message? It means, great job, you got it. This type of code is called a Caesar box because Julius Caesar was known as the first one to write codes this way. To decipher the message, simply divide the code into four groups of four then rearrange them vertically.